Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on and stand on your feet. Come on and give God some praise, church. Give God some praises. Ah, oh, he's been so good to us. I just can't, Marcia, I can't tell it all. I just can't tell it all. If, if I could tell it all, then it would be one thing, Lady Terry. But I just can't tell it all. I, I really just can't tell it all, Mother Parkinson. I cannot begin to tell it all. So all I can say is give God some praises. Ha. Ah. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take someone by the hand. And just briefly for a moment, I want you to suspend your thoughts on what's going on in your house. Suspend the thought of what's going on on your job in the community. Suspend the thought of how you gonna pay your mortgage. And let us just go before the throne of grace because we, we can, amen. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, we wanna say thank you for today. Thank you, God, that you have granted unto us new grace and new mercy just for today. Thank you, Lord God, for how you brought us out of yesterday and, and you met every need that we had on yesterday. And today, God, we know that you will meet every need that we have on today. But God, now it is preaching time. And if I had only one request... That would be that they would see Jesus. That we, oh God, will see your son. Because God, we realize and we know that once we look upon the face of the one who died for us, we know, God, that our bodies will be healed. Our homes will be secure. Doors will be opened. Our enemies will have to flee. We know, God, that once we look upon the face of Jesus the Christ, we know, hallelujah, that our lives shall be transformed and we shall be redeemed and delivered. So, God, all we're asking for is that each person in here, starting with this pulpit, that we will see Jesus. And then, God, once we see him, we ask that we... Somebody will come saying, what must I do to be saved? We ask God that somebody will say that I was in the presence of a living God. We ask God that someone will say that I know that I've been changed. Because we know that when we come into your presence, all things are made new. In Jesus' name. And the redeemed of the Lord say it. The redeemed of the Lord say it. Now say it like you know that you're bought with a price. Like God shed his blood for you. Say it like you know that heaven and earth are waiting to applaud who you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's sweet, Will. That is sweet to my soul. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's all right. Go ahead, Will. Go ahead. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. He's already tapped in. He's already tapped in. He's already here. Whatever you need right now, this very moment, God is doing it for us, y'all. Can you feel the oil flowing in the place? Yeah. Yeah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm.
that name. Jesus, Master, Savior, ah! heaven and earth proclaim. He said, kings and kingdoms will all pass away. My, my, my. Hallelujah. That name. Yes, yes, yes. It's something about that name. Amen. My grandmama used to say it like this, Tamer. She would say, what is this that makes me love everybody? <laughs> what is this that makes me want to walk upright? What is it? And somebody said, it's nothing but the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you have your bulletins, I would ask that you stand in the presence of God. If you're not able to stand, that's all right. But if you are able to stand, please do so. We're coming from John, the New Testament, chapter 3. And it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same night, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want to pay close attention to verse 2. It says, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except thou doest, except God be with him. The word of God for the people of God. Bless his holy name. You may take your seats in his presence. I am so glad to see Mother Parkinson, who has not been able to come to church in a while. Amen. Amen. Anytime we can see the mothers of the church walk down the aisle, it is a blessing. Amen. In fact, I'm just happy to see the whole congregation. Let me just go on and tell it, tell the truth. Amen. I, I see Sister Lakeisha Bean, who was on vacation. If I get to call the names of folk that I miss seeing, we'll be here for a minute. But it's, I think it's preaching time. So if I don't call your name, please know it's because I want to preach. Amen. Marcia, I'm glad to see you. Just briefly for a moment, I want to deal with the subject, even at midnight, even at midnight. Has there ever been a time when you find yourself asking, is there any more to life than this? Such questions will generally arise when there's a level of frustration when one's life seems to have come to a standstill, 
when there doesn't seem to be a promotion coming on the job anytime soon, when the laughter has left the relationship, when you have grown, outgrown your friends, when there seems to be more bills than money, when you no longer are content with sitting at home watching General Hospital, One Life to Live, and Young and the Restless, when everything around you has been reduced to nothing more than a colorful parade and life itself is broken into what may appear as a disconnect between the desire to live an abundant life and the nowness of our realities, that such a question begins to press in like the waves of the sea thus forcing us to rediscover or redefine who we are or redefine or give a new meaning to who we are. In fact, you all, if I had to describe where we are right now as in this country, in this community, as African Americans, I would say is midnight. Huh? But, but, but I'm so glad to know that redefining oneself, yet while it is a process and sometimes it can be a difficult and even a frightening process because the individual, you and I as a community, must go before the people in an attempt to be vulnerable and take a risk believing that midnight will soon pass. In this morning's text, now, if you will read with me, he says, now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night, somebody say at night, uh, he came at night. He came, in fact, he came at midnight, some scriptures say. And he said to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if it were not for God with him. Ah, uh, midnight is the darkest hour before day. Midnight is a dark time, not only in a physical sense, but it is also in the form of a metaphor relating to a dark time in a person's life. It is midnight is a testing time. It is times when you may be caused some pain or it's times when you shed some tears, not only by your family, but in your finances and in a job, in your physical body, in your spiritual body. It is a time when it looks like it's nothing going right at all. In fact, if I had to pull the room and ask any Everybody about midnight, so I'm sure there's somebody in this very room, this very moment, who's dealing with a midnight situation. Mm. Midnights tend to zap your energy. They tend to zap your strength. They zap your, jo your joy. They cause you to not want to pray. They cause you to want to be isolated. They cause you to think that God is not God. They, midnights, midnights. I don't know if anybody in here has been in a midnight situation, but I can tell you from experience that when you get in a midnight situation, sometimes it's just you yourself and your shadow. Mm. It, it is, it is, Lady Keisha. It, midnight is a time of transition. It's that time right before you can see the daybreak. It's, it's the time right before the miracle comes, huh? That all hell breaks loose. It's, it's that time when it looks like when you're trying to do the right thing, everybody and anybody who you thought was somebody turns against you because you're at that place where you're not, you're not quite dark enough and you're not quite light enough. The day has not yet broken through midnight and you're standing still and you're call, you're, it's causing your spirit to get anxious because midnight is designed to cause people to doubt God. Mm. 
midnight. Most of us, if, if you have ever heard anything about witchcraft and voodoo, it is at midnight that they do their work. Huh? It is at midnight that they start to, do, start to do their chanting and whatever else. But also, I want you to understand that midnights are not all, just for dark days. But sometimes midnight is the best time that God can perform one of the greatest miracles. Amen. It is midnight. Is it midnight can be beneficial not just to an individual, but it can be beneficial to a body of Christ. Midnight, y'all, is necessary sometimes so that God could get us just by ourselves. Because it's at midnight that you're going to sing a song and talk and make up songs and write poems and do a dance. It's at midnight when you way down yonder can't hear nobody praying, but you and the Lord, the mosquitoes have gone to sleep. The fog stopped cracking. The, the, the crickets stopped chirping. The birds are not singing. The sun doesn't seem to shine. The rain keeps falling. It's at midnight that in spite of what it looks like, you got to get to that place where you say, it's just me and you, God. And if, if, if nobody else want to come, if no one else want to sing, if no one else want to dance, if no one else wants to write a poem, if no one else wants to usher, if no one else, it's me and it's you, God. Uh, midnight, I, I, I want you to understand that while some people would pay close attention to the fact that midnight looks like it's gloom and doom, I want the church to pay attention to the fact that midnight is the time when the greatest miracles have been wrought. Can I get an amen? Ah, if you don't believe me, I just want you to journey just a moment down in the book of Acts 16. It tells me that Peter, hallelujah, Paul and Silas, uh, who were beaten uh, and thrown in prison, uh, that they at midnight uh, began to sing, uh, Kumbaya, uh, my Lord, Kumbaya. It was at midnight, uh, though they had been beaten, uh, talked about, uh, lied on, uh, though they had been spat on. It was at midnight, uh, that time before daybreak, uh, right in that middle, uh, that they began to sing uh, Amazing Grace, uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch like me. It was at midnight, y'all, uh, and as they began to pray uh, and praise uh, and worship, uh, they said to me that something uh, happened. Uh, Ah, you know, you know, you know, uh, when you began to praise God and out of your circumstances and you're not, your, your circumstances can't dictate to you what your attitude is going to be when you look like you don't have money, but you can sit up and say, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. It's at midnight when the earthquake came and the earth shook and it rattled and it rolled and the rafter shook and the Bible says that at midnight one minute, not one minute before, or not one minute after, but at the darkest point in your life is when God will spring forth prison doors and cause them to open. Can I get an amen? Ha! Ha! But not only will he spring open prison doors for you, Brother Hall, but when he spring forth a prison door, everybody who's connected to you will receive the overflow of your blessing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Ah, the Bible says that the prison guard was standing right there getting ready to kill himself uh, because he thought he had let him go. Uh, and Paul said, hold up. No, 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 don't, 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 don't take your life. Uh, 
we're still here. We just want you to know that in your midnight, you thought you had us all locked up. But I just want you to know that because we serve a God who never sleeps nor slumbers, he can meet me where I am at midnight. Uh, and then not only did the God not take his life, uh, but the Bible says uh, that the entire family, I got some Bible scholars in here, hallelujah. Ah, it was in the book of Ruth. Uh, Ruth, the third chapter, and I believe it's the eighth, ninth, and tenth verse that Ruth, who was a stranger in a foreign land, Ruth, I don't know if you all have read the story, but it was Naomi who taught Ruth uh, how to deal with Boaz. Uh, Boaz, who was the lineage to the connection to Jesus Christ. Uh, Am I just talking to myself? Let me talk to somebody who understands and really wants this story. Uh, it was at midnight. Naomi said, now, you go out there and you pick up whatever the residue is. I want you to pick it up. Huh? But at midnight, I want you to go and lay at his feet and cover yourself. And at midnight, he says to her, who is this? Huh? At midnight when it looks like uh, nobody wants to know who you are. Uh, God will call somebody who don't know you uh, to say, who are you? Uh, where did you come from? Uh, don't worry, Cynthia. Uh, I'm going to bless you anyhow. Uh, why? Because you did what was right uh, at midnight. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Nicodemus, the Bible says, was... A Pharisee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin, which is that he was a part of the Supreme Council. And he was a part of the tribunal of, for the Jews and the high priest. Well, he was the one who set up and went over the law. He was the one huh, who could tell you where the law was. If it was 600 laws, if it was 20 laws, he knew where it was. Why? Because he was from the, the, the tribe of Pharisee. He was a Pharisee and he was well learned. Huh? He, in other words, let me put it in today's uh, uh, vocabulary, he was probably a trustee, maybe a steward, and he knew the discipline backwards and forwards. He knew the hymnal, the A-M-E hymnal, the C-M-E hymnal, the A-M-E Zion hymnal. He knew the laws of the church. He knew how to come in and sit up. He knew when to stand and when to sit. He knew that if the elder walked in, he would stand. And if the bishop walked in, he would say, and today I present to you the 191st uh, bishop of the land of who who from the land of Tutu. He knew exactly what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. But the Bible says uh, that at midnight uh, Jesus uh, while he had witnessed uh, some of, so, uh, something about being able to witness who Jesus is for yourself. Uh, somewhere Lady Keisha between uh, him turning water to wine at a wedding feast in Galilee uh, to traveling over to Jerusalem uh, so, and turning and purging a church. Uh, something got a hold to Nicodemus. Uh, uh, something, something deep in his soul uh, cried out for more. Uh, something said it's not enough uh, for me to be able to quote the doxology. Uh, it's not enough for me to do the call to worship. Uh, isn't there more? You know, he, he Nicodemus, who, who was bad in his own right, he, he found himself, Lady Shaw, coming to church Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday after Wednesday, and he would tell you to turn the page 642, but he couldn't tell you about a relationship with Jesus the Christ. And the Bible says that at midnight, there came a knock at the door. Huh. 
And Jesus opens the door, and here's what Nicodemus says. He says, there is something drawing me to a living well. I'm paraphrasing now, just in case you don't understand. I'm paraphrasing. I'm believing, Brother Hall, that I'm standing at the door. I put myself in Nicodemus' shoes, and I thought I began to hear him say, Jesus, I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty for more. I know the rituals and the disciplines of the church, and yes, Mother Hall, the discipline and the, the discipline and the doctrine of the church are wonderful. I can hear him saying, Mother Stringer, that the history is excellent, and yes, we need to teach our young children the history of the church. But I hear Nicodemus saying, There's something with down in the bowels of my soul that has ignited a fire within me uh, that cannot be quenched. Uh, I hear Nicodemus saying, uh, I need more than what I've had. Uh, I need to witness uh, miracles, signs, and wonders. Am I the only one uh, who can imagine what Nicodemus said? Uh, uh, he said, it just won't, Marcia, it just won't let me Hold my peace. Have you ever been at that place in your life where you couldn't go to sleep uh, and all you could do was walk the floor uh, from one night to the other uh, and singing Amazing Grace? Uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch uh, like me. Have you ever walked that floor uh, and knew that it was God, uh, Mother Daisy, who brought you out? Uh, and when you looked up, uh, you threw your hand in the air and say father I stretch my hands to thee if thou withdraw thou self from me at midnight have you walked the floor when pain was wrecking your body you heard the report of the doctor and Brenda you refuse to give in to the naysayer and you looked at your soul uh, and said, soul, uh, take courage. Uh, soul, uh, whose report uh, are you going to believe? Uh, soul, uh, stand tall. Uh, have you ever uh, been at that place, uh, Renita, where it didn't matter uh, what your friends or your enemies uh, thought about what you were doing, uh, but you had to make your way uh, to the house of God? Uh, have you ever been there uh, when somebody said, uh, why are you going to church again? Uh, and you looked at them uh, and said, I ain't got no choice. Midnight. Midnight. But Jesus, it's Nicodemus says, after I, after I heard for myself, Quasi, after I saw the things, uh, who can take water uh, and turn it into wine? Uh, who does that? Uh, nobody that I know uh, can do any such miracle. Uh, so he must be uh, a man. Uh, a man. At God. He comes at midnight. And he comes denying the luxury of sleep. Whew. He comes denying the luxury of being with his friends. He comes at midnight knowing that if his friends, who were supposed to be as scholarly as he was, if they knew that he had gone to see Jesus, he too would have been isolated he too would have been an outcast but he came at midnight because he was just that hungry for more huh 
So, so, so what is it about midnight? How, Lady Carla, what can we learn from Nicodemus that we don't already know in our own spirits? Well, the first thing, if, if you're going to see a miracle take place at midnight, uh, you must understand who you're talking to. You're not just talking to Joe Blow uh, and my homie. You're not talking to your cuz. Uh, you're not talking to the bloods of the Crips. Uh, you're not talking to my girlfriend. Uh, when you understand who you're talking to, uh, then you understand how the reverence uh, that who has authority over you Listen, listen, what he says. He says, uh, he comes to Jesus and he identifies. He says, he says, ah, uh, you must be. Listen, y'all. He said, you must be a man of God. He said, because nobody understands how to do those kind of miracles uh, unless you are sent from God. There ought to be some times in your life uh, when people uh, who don't even know your name uh, can look at you and say uh, you must be, uh, you got to be uh, a woman, a man of God. Uh, you got to be holy. You got to be righteous. Uh, not because you've been so good. Uh, not because you know the law. Uh, not because you know the discipline. Uh, but because you desire to have a relationship uh, with God himself uh, and when you can identify uh, that he is God, uh, God by himself uh, then you will come uh, into the household of faith uh, and you will begin uh, to worship uh, a true uh, and living God uh, because the Bible says uh, that every knee must bow uh, and every Every tongue must confess uh, that he is Lord. Uh, he's Lord yesterday. Uh, he's Lord today. Uh, and he's Lord tomorrow. Uh, he's my redeemer uh, yesterday. Uh, my redeemer uh, today. Uh, and my redeemer uh, on tomorrow. Uh, he is uh, and was uh, and shall ever be uh, God, uh, Yahweh, uh, Emmanuel, uh, Jesus, uh, Jehovah Jireh, uh, come on church, uh, when you identify uh, who he is. See, when we come into the church, Bishop Brian told a story about when he got elected as bishop, and he was walking with my husband, Lady Terry, and said somebody kept saying, Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. And Bishop Bryan looked at Bishop Brookings and said, Bishop, they, somebody calling you. He said, fool, they ain't calling me. You, they calling you. You just got elected. I've been elected. They trying to get your attention. When you understand who you're talking to, it'll cause people to call your name in the midnight hour. You can call on his name. He did the midnight hour. When you are somewhat confused about your identity, he's not confused. He said before before you were formed uh, in your mother's belly, uh, I called you uh, to a place of greatness. Uh, I chose you. Uh, I selected you. Uh, I elected you. Uh, and now I'm consecrating. So the first thing at midnight, if you're going to have it even at midnight, when you want to have an, a miracle experience at midnight, uh, the second thing you must do is be able to reveal to God his authority and his power. He says, here Jesus comes walking. When he gets there, now if it had been me, Brother Isaac, and you knocking on my door at 1 o'clock in the morning, 
First of all, you might have a rude awakening. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> but number two, uh, I'm going to say some choice words to you uh, that'll let you know uh, that it's not all right uh, for you to just show up when you get ready to. Uh, well, uh, Jesus is not like me, uh, and I'm so glad that he isn't. Uh, the Bible says uh, that when Nic Nicodemus uh, knocked on the door, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, for those of you who have not read the story, I invite you to go read it. But he led him in the house. And in letting him in the house, uh, what he was saying is this. Uh, I have and show no partiality uh, to anyone who comes after me. Uh, and when you come after me, uh, whether it be at midnight uh, or daybreak, uh, when you call on my name, uh, my arms are not too short. Uh, to save you uh, when you call on my name uh, not only am I going to save you uh, but I'm going to rescue you uh, and when I rescue you uh, I'm going to put you uh, in a safe place uh, in a place of peace uh, in a place of authority uh, I'm going to give uh, unto you uh, the very thing uh, that was given unto me uh, I'm going to give you uh, shalom, uh, that peace uh, that surpasses uh, all understanding. Uh, I'm going to give to you uh, when you come into my house, uh, abundant uh, life. Uh, I came uh, to give you uh, abundant life. Uh, the devil seeks uh, to see whom uh, he can kill, uh, steal, and destroy. Uh, but I I want you to know uh, that I came uh, so that every member and in Walker Temple can have Jesus listen to this Nicodemus began to voice his confession of faith immediately this is what I like y'all because Nicodemus wasn't with a whole lot of people. <laughs> And he didn't need anybody to say, come on and praise the Lord. Uh, he didn't have an organ. Uh, he didn't have a piano. Uh, he didn't have a horn uh, or a guitar. Uh, he didn't have a tambourine. Uh, but he was by himself uh, in the presence of God. Uh, and there's something about uh, when you get in the presence of God, uh, you can cry, holy, uh, holy, uh, holy, uh, thou art holy. Uh, if that's not good enough, uh, Reverend Carol, we can say, Thou art uh, the Lamb of God uh, who took away uh, the sins of the world. Uh, if that's not good enough, uh, you can say uh, that on a Friday, uh, they beat him uh, with 39 stripes. Uh, if that's not good enough, uh, you can say uh, that on a Saturday, uh, he laid in a borrowed tomb. Uh, if that's not good enough, uh, if I got anybody in here uh, that knows how to call uh, on the name of Jesus uh, and confess your faith uh, immediately, uh, I don't need the drama, uh, I don't need a guitar, uh, I don't need a piano, uh, but I can look uh, and say, uh, because the Lord uh, has been good to me, uh, I can dance, dance, dance. Dance, 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 all night. I don't need you to pump me up. I don't need you to say, come on and praise the Lord with me. I don't need, but I heard David say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Because a midnight experience is just about you and Jesus. A midnight experience. It ain't got nothing to do with my mama. It has nothing to do with my father. It has nothing to do with my friends. 
but and it sure enough don't have anything to do with my enemies uh, it's because I want a relationship uh, with God uh, that I can cry out uh, in the midnight hour Lord uh, have mercy uh, is at that place uh, where I can identify uh, not for you uh, or someone else uh, but I can identify myself uh, and not worry Terry uh, about being transparent yeah, yeah. that's a, you know we have we have gotten into a place and not just African Methodist Church but the whole body of Christendom we have gotten into this place uh, that if we don't know what mega church is, uh, if we're not seating uh, five, six, seven, eight hundred people, uh, then we think uh, we're not doing the will of God. Uh, but I heard somebody say, uh, where two or three uh, are gathered in my name, uh, uh, touching and agreeing uh, on the same thing, uh, God would be in the midst. Uh, so I come to tell you this morning uh, don't get confused uh, and think that Walker Temple uh, is not doing what it's supposed to do uh, I want you to know uh, that we're having a midnight experience uh, and before daybreak uh, before they can even think about it uh, we gonna explode uh, with miracles uh, signs uh, wonders uh, I don't want to just do church uh, I don't want to stand on the outside I want to be on the inside. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see the cripple walk. I want to see the deaf hear. So you may not get 5,000 in the beginning. But let me tell you this. Oh, I'd rather have... All 60 of you who know who you are in God and can stand boldly and tell the devil, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you than to have a thousand milk toast unbelieving Bible toting, uh, scripture not knowing, uh, no reading of the Bible, uh, a thousand of them uh, can get out of my sight. Uh, I'd rather have 60 uh, of you all uh, who can stand uh, when the storms of life are raging uh, and say without a shadow of a doubt, uh, if God be for me, uh, who uh, can be against me? And lastly, yeah, and lastly, Brother Michael, if you're going to have a midnight experience, you must know the rules of the game. You know, I don't play sports, and I tell y'all that because I don't know what a foul is. I don't know if they're throwing the ball on the right court. I don't know if they're tackling the right person. Because I'm going to tell you, I told my son he was playing uh, rugby. And rugby, now he said, I couldn't understand this, Brother Quasi. He said, I don't want to play football. I said, huh? He said, I don't want to play football, Mama. I said, well, what you going to play? Because you got to have at least one year of some kind of sports uh, so you'll understand how to deal with community. He said, well, Mama, I think I'm going to play some rugby. Now listen, y'all, here's the rule of the game in football. When you're playing football, you got on a helmet, you got on teeth guard, you got on a pad, you got on stuff that protects you. You got the front covered, the back covered, the knees covered, you got the feet covered. That's almost like the whole armor of God. You're putting it on from the top to the bottom. But my baby looked at me. He said, Mama, I'm not going to play football. I'm going to play rugby. 
and I looked and I shook my head and he out there with all them you know boys that didn't look like him and I was kind of afraid that one of them would pick him up and drop him fine drop him hard on that ground mother string I looked and he playing and he a little bitty thing and he just running and all of a sudden I saw him and he hit this little old white boy, and he hit that boy so hard, I tell you the truth, if he had hit me like that, but he didn't, he didn't that, but the boy went flying, foom, foom. I said, whoa, I don't know if I want to play no rugby, because they don't have on a helmet, they don't have the breastplate, they don't have the shin guards, they don't have a thing on your mouth, they just start running, and all they had, but here's the rule of rugby, when you know how to play with a team, you don't have to have all of that, when you're with Jesus, you can be by yourself. Uh, and have the confidence uh, of knowing uh, that when you hit the enemy uh, he's going to go whoop and whoop and you're going to say uh, give God uh, some praise uh, you're going to say uh, I'm not afraid uh, bring what you have uh, and put it against my God uh, and see if my God uh, or your bell uh, is going to win <laughs>